I'm John Mike Keane. Used to be the president of ABC and now I work in the mailroom. I'm undercover. We still cover the news. I love Kevin O'Leary and this is partially why. I guess she's imitating Donald Trump, but why would you buy the imitation if you could have the real deal? Well, this policy, no question, was introduced by Trump first. Harris is now pretending to endorse my policy. She's got a lot of other policies. She went from communism to capitalism in about uh, two weeks. But in fact, Kamala cast the tie-breaking vote to hire 87,000 new IRS agents to go after your tip income. Kamala's going after the tips, but I love that Kevin O'Leary, who is not a fan of Kamala or Trump, he's not a political partisan, is calling out Kamala. She is not being clear on her economic policy. Come through the Democratic Convention of uh, Policy Light. There's some big vision statements, but I'm really encouraged that now the focus has to come into detail starting September 10th. Even if she doesn't take an interview before then, you can't avoid the debate. All the White House does is cover up and hide. They tried to hide Kamala Harris now from doing any kind of an interview, just like they tried to hide Joe Biden. I haven't seen you in a while. Ooh. Well, uh, you guys haven't had a press briefing since <laughs> President Biden dropped out of the race. So. Ouch. She blames Ducey and Ducey calls her out back to Kevin O'Leary. But I would think by now she's got to start explaining because remember, I'm an investor and I represent a, a group of people that have to invest regardless of it in the White House. So we need policy. We need policy on energy. We need policy on taxation. When it comes to Kevin O'Leary, John Mike does like. We dig him. He wants specifics on our economic policy. You're not going to get it, Kevin O'Leary, because she's an embarrassment. We need policy on a wide range of issues, including the border security, on energy in terms of how it's deployed. Housing's a big one. I mean, I'm in the real estate yeah. business. Her housing policies uh, don't make sense. And so we'd like to hear some more detail on that. Saying it doesn't make sense. That's a huge rejection. But will she ever come clean on her actual economic policy? I really doubt it. Housing is determined at a state mandate level. And so for her to say she's going to build three million homes, I'd love to understand how that's going to happen because I don't believe it. He doesn't believe you, Kamala Harris, because you're lying. Kevin O'Leary just called you a liar. This election now is boiling down to voters in seven states. So swing voters, they care about policy more than anything else. They're sitting waiting for more information. So if Trump just stays on mandate with policy, he's pretty clear on what he wants to do on energy border, foreign affairs. He's delivered messages on that. I can expect that Harris will do the same soon. They're the people that are going to decide. So this is about the middle deciding this thing. It's going to largely be on economic issues. All of the social issues will be pushed aside by the middle. They're not going to buy the right, you know, saying free speech. They're not going to buy the left saying get more abortions going. That's not what animates them. They want to know about policies, including the border, including the economy including world affairs, and Kamala Harris is hiding on all those fronts. And I think now is the time to start focusing on that. We're down to 70 days, and we still don't know what's going to happen here. Oh, I know what's going to happen. Trump's got to smoke Kamala Harris or uh, America is ruined. I'll add one other element to this, and I think it's a narrative you started exploring today, and it's been over the last two days I've been hearing it. If, in fact, Harris loses, and it's 50-50, she may win, she may mm -hmm. lose. This whole party, the Democratic Party, is going to revisit what happened here because they did the same thing with Hillary Clinton. It was assumed she would win, they anointed her, she lost. And ever since she lost, she's been riding around on this little bicycle, here she is, showing up to the DNC, there's little Hillary. Oh, 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 she's a robot on a bicycle. Harris is assumed a winner by anointment. If she loses, the party will never do this to itself again because they missed the opportunity to run a process and suck up another week of airtime, and they didn't do it. Now, I'm not saying she's going to lose, but I would have never let that happen if I'm selling a business. I tell my managers, Never bring me one offer. Bring me a process. That's the business side of politics looking at it that she's not. They never let the quote unquote free market decide on Kamala Harris. They christened her. They anointed her. They made her the queen without one single vote cast for her. A very dangerous move. Show me there's no other bid out there that I want. Then I'll make a decision if I'm selling. I was amazed they didn't do that here because Newsom made reference to it. There may have been other candidates or she could have emerged much stronger, but right. they didn't do that. That may prove to be a huge mistake. 
Well, you're a free market guy and you're talking about competition. And that's something Democrats <laughs> don't like. Um, you're darn that's- right. That's the biggest, sickest burn on Democrats. Democrats don't like competition. They don't like the free market of ideas because all their ideas will fail if they ever had to actually stand up and take a principled stand. That's why they take away our microphones. That's why they put us in hiding because they know they can't win a debate. This has been John Mike Keene, the voice of America's right.